All righty. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our February conversations. We are very, very excited to have with us uh, Michelle Monagold from Jackson High School. She's going to be doing a really um, unique and fun presentation for us, and I'm so happy that she was able to join us today. Just a thank you quick to our sponsor, Faye A. Heston, for making this possible. Make sure to check us out next month on March 8th for a discussion with Daniel Kuntz from Baldwin Wallace Conservatory Music about the Baroque time period and all that comes with that. Um, now that we are here and um, ready to go, I am going to introduce our speaker who will be ready in just a second. We are going to be talking with uh, Michelle Monagold. Michelle is uh, the band director at Jackson High School and she is a wonderful partner of the symphony and she um, is truly just amazing. She's helped me out with a lot of stuff in my life and it's been really wonderful uh, to have her as a part of this community. So without further ado, I'm gonna turn it over to her. She is going to talk for a little bit and then she's actually going to introduce us to her students. They're gonna play a little bit and we will have a lot of opportunity to actually ask questions of her students. Then we'll, we'll close it out with um, uh, time to ask questions just to her. So Michelle, thank you so much for being with us today and I will turn it over to you. Thank you so much for being here. Um, and first of all, I'd like to thank Rachel for having me. This is an honor and uh, she just does such incredible work uh, keeping the community involved in the Canton Symphony and uh, especially this year. So thank you so much for all your hard work, Rachel. Um, I'd also like to thank uh, my administration, my principal, Mr. Jeff Crocker, and the parents and students who have uh, allowed us to have this unique perspective by giving you an inside peek into the classroom. I think it's really important if we're talking about music education, there are no better people to speak about it than the students that I get a chance to stand in front of every day. So um, you'll get a chance to talk with me, but more importantly, to speak with them as well. Uh, so if you're watching today, Obviously, you um, probably already very much support music education and the arts in general in the schools, but perhaps I can give you a unique perspective. And um, let me just first of all give you a, a very short biography about uh, where I'm at in my career. Um, I started teaching uh, 31 years ago at a very small program, uh, 27 students, and um, I came here in 1996 as an assistant director and uh, am now director of bands here. And I, I can't say enough about band students in general, no matter where I teach, music students in general. They are just um, some of the finest students throughout the school. And I know that there's a correlation between being part of a music program and being those fantastic uh, people that they are. So I'd like to just speak about that and the importance of music education in the schools and um, then finish uh, speaking about a, a couple of the things that perhaps you can do so, to support music education um, at the school level. So uh, first of all, why, why music in the schools? Uh, a lot of people stress the importance of um, how it helps other aspects of a student's education, like test scores or their attendance perhaps. And I, I do see validity in that, but, but I challenge people to think about music and the arts educationally to stand on their own and to look at the merit and the value that these things have without connecting them to things like other tested subject areas or attendance or things like that. Um, as far as music education goes, obviously I'm, I'm challenged to teach students the nuts and bolts of playing music, but just like every other educator or coach in a school system, we're teaching kids and hoping that they'll become better overall people. That's the overall goal that we're after. And um, this brings me to the correlation between music and sports, which we discuss all the time. Um, I talk about that a lot in rehearsal situations. The fact that musicians and athletes both are always in pursuit of perfection, even though we know that we'll never get there. And I think that's really important to understand that, that we will fail constantly and to have what we call in the education world a growth mindset where we know that we can't do it yet, but we will continue to try to do that. And I think it's important for us as people to remember that we, we will never be perfect human beings, but we continue to work on trying to be perfect 
every day we start over trying to improve ourselves, just like we do in a sport that we play, just like we do as a musician. Um, the idea of team, valuing each other, learning to work cooperatively, learning to look at each other's different skill sets, what everybody has to offer, and working those different skills and those different personalities together. Those are all incredibly valuable lessons. And in that way, I think a child can get that from involvement in a music performance class or involvement in a sport. But music is unique and it does have some things that are different from athletics, at least in my perspective. Um, last week I was speaking, I had a professor, Andrew Shareri from Kent State University was speaking with my world music class. And he said something that really, I thought related very well to this conversation that we're having. And um, that is that there are three things that are unique to a culture. Uh, the language of the people, the food of the people, and the music of the people. Those three things are incredibly unique to any culture that you might visit around the world. And I started thinking about how music does truly define us. Um, it creates a historical record of who we are as a, as a nation, as a people, as a, uh, a time period. And it also gives us insight to who those people are. And in thinking of that, if music is around us every single day, it's around everyone throughout the world. And what we might be listening to might be different, but we are all listening. And the music is there for all of us. And if it is everywhere around us and it defines us as a culture, then it truly should be studied and preserved as a nation. And if that's the case, it obviously has a perspective in the classroom. Um, and then I, I just wanted to give you a little perspective of what happens um, behind the scenes when we're working on a piece of music and we're performing a piece of music. What the students that you're about to meet here, what they go through in the performance and the rehearsal aspect. Uh, first of all, they obviously need to learn to read and interpret the symbols and the signs as if it were a foreign language. So they're looking at this crazy stuff on a piece of paper and they're interpreting it and um, bringing it to life, very similar to learning a foreign language. They also need to learn the history behind the work, which will greatly impact how it's interpreted. Sometimes this includes learning about important people or important moments in history. Sometimes it um, is focused on learning about an entirely different culture that the piece might be based on. As they're performing, they're making split second decisions, uh, kind of like driving a car on a very busy highway. Um, they're responding to the students around them, to the sounds that they're hearing, and they're also responding to the director. And sometimes they're responding to the audience as well or their surroundings. So they're constantly making decisions as they're performing the piece and as they're rehearsing the piece. They learn about their own feelings through the music that they encounter. Sometimes it ha helps them better understand who they are. Sometimes it helps them identify uh, with a certain culture or, or a different perspective. It just opens up a different world that is very hard to put into words. But any of you who have been part of a performance ensemble know how that feels, that it, it helps you identify with who you are. And most importantly, they learn that they need to keep going if they make a mistake. And I think, again, that growth mindset and that idea that yes, we'll have bumps along the road, just like this entire year and a half has been. It's a, it's, it's a bumpy time, but we're still moving forward. We're still making progress. We don't stop. We keep going. And I really can't think of a better way to learn all of these things than by making music with just incredible people. And I'm really fortunate that I get to do that each and every day. This is just the highlight of my day, and these students are tremendous. And um, when we think about how you can support music education, there are a couple things that I would urge you to do. Um, first of all, if you can just consider attending some of your local school performances, um, and I'm not just talking about the high school levels, but, but get out there and support the elementary and the middle school and go to the art shows and go to the recitals. And, and I think those faces in the audience, and, and if you can drop a note to that um, administrator and say, hey, 
this is important and thank you. This is great what, what these people are doing. No matter what community you live in, there's fantastic performance coming out and those kids are working hard. So if you can attend those, that would be great. Um, also talking about other people and explaining the value of arts education in the schools, because obviously it's important to you, but it might not be important to them. And uh, we all know that sometimes school funding, the things that get cut are the, are the non-tested subjects. So uh, when it comes down to it, when those levies need to be passed or they're making decisions, if you can be an advocate for the arts, that is so helpful to, to the education process. And then the last thing I would say is to encourage the best and brightest kids to go into music education or to go into education. Um, uh, we, we need to have the best and brightest people in front of our children. And that's very important to me and I try to encourage kids. Um, I think that's something that will continue to pay off dividends in the long run. Uh, so I, I'm sorry that I've, I've talked a lot, but I want to get to your questions and get, give you a chance to hear the kids play. Uh, we're going to play just a little 30 second clip um, of a piece that we're studying right now, which is called Vesuvius by composer Frank T. Kelly. And we had the pleasure of doing a video conference with um, Frank T. Kelly uh, a while ago when we were on remote um, before the holiday season. And uh, we were able to get his insight on this work and we've just had a wonderful time rehearsing it. We're hoping to perform it very soon. And um, after we play, then we'll have some time for some question and answer with the students. And then when they leave at about uh, 1245, if you had some other questions that you'd like to direct to me uh, personally, that's fine too. So give me just a quick moment while we set up. And... Uh, Thank you, Michelle, so much. Um, I, I'm very excited to hear them play. I actually played this piece uh, when I was in high school. Um, so that is very exciting for me. Uh, the group you're about to hear is made up of sophomores, juniors, and seniors. Um, and they are the highest level band here at Jackson High School. Um, several of the students in this group are also in the Canton Youth Symphonies, um, which is really exciting for me because I get to see some people that, oh look, they're right there. They're literally right in front of me um, that I know. And so um, very excited to have them play today. And I will turn it back over to Michelle so we can hear a little bit of of Vesuvius. Okay, ready? 363, yes, 363, one, two. Mm -hmm. so wonderful. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, that sounded super wonderful. So um, at this time, we can take some questions. So if you have any questions, feel free to throw them in the chat. Um, we are going to um, ask the, the students or Michelle if you have any questions. Um, I have some questions here as well that have been sent to me, but feel free to just drop any questions you have in the chat about um, music making um, at the high school level or just music education in general or what these students are interested in doing. I'll give you a couple of minutes uh, to do that and make sure that Michelle is all um, squared away and ready to go. Yes, we also have uh, my principal, Mr. Jeff Crocker, is here as well. So if oh. you had some questions from an administrative perspective, he has been so gracious to join us today as well. Wonderful. All right. Well, I will start looking at these uh, questions that are coming to me. Thank you. Let me just sort through them. Um, wonderful. Um, so as we are uh, going along, maybe Michelle, um, if you could just start off by telling us, so I mentioned that this is a group of sophomores, juniors, and seniors. What kind of are the percentages there, sophomore, junior, senior-wise? Uh, sophomores, want to raise your hands? 
Yeah, there are about 10 or so, a dozen maybe sophomores. It's a little harder to break in that first year. Uh, juniors, that's about the other, yeah, that's probably about a third. And then this is a pretty seniors, this is a pretty top heavy ensemble. There are quite a number of seniors. Many students work through the process. We have um, a freshman band and then we have three other level bands. So a lot of times a student might not get in this room their first year, and then maybe they, they keep working, improving skills. So it's, I would say a little top heavy with seniors and then the, the smallest amount are sophomores. Um, wonderful. Maybe a yes. student uh, can answer this question, but uh, what made you want to go into band? What, what, I decided this as an extracurricular, we know that sometimes it's a requirement that you are in a music ensemble of some sort, uh, maybe in middle school, but maybe one of you can answer why a band has become so important to you and why you have stuck with it this long. I'll let our band president answer this, Olivia Marrero. Okay. Hello. Can you Hello. Hear yes, Olivia, I can. So initially I went into band because my abuelo was in a band and I kind of wanted to follow in his footsteps. I wanted to play saxophone, but the minute I touched a, uh, a reed, I was like, this isn't going to work. <laughs> so um, I decided to play trumpet. And the reason I've stuck with it is kind of going off of what Mrs. Monagold said. It's taught me so many life lessons and it's given me my friend group. All of my best friends are from band and I never would have met any of them if I hadn't been a part of this program. So that's probably why I stuck with it. And I just love music in general. Yeah, wonderful. I think it's really, yeah, you, you bring up the family aspect and you, all your friends. Um, and I definitely know that being part of an ensemble brings people closer uh, together. So maybe Olivia or, or someone else can answer, how do you feel um, it is, you know, getting along with the other people and making music together? What is What's different about making music with other people than, say, uh, playing piano alone at your house? What, what makes it different being in band versus being solo? Should I answer that? Anyone else want to go? <laughs> Rossi, come on up. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> oh, I'm there. Okay. Um, so pretty much like I know I do private lessons, so I'll play solos and stuff sometimes. Mm -hmm. And it's not the same because... When you're with a band, you get to see how, like, everybody reacts to the music and not even just, like, the audience, but, like, I remember the first few times playing with this program, like, just seeing Mrs. Monagold up there and if we would play something really well and everybody would be like, oh, my gosh. So it's just kind of how everyone works together and getting to see the response of, like, mm -hmm. music. And yeah. Music. Yes, I think that's that's really I think that's a really important thing of being able to feel other people's emotions, feel other uh, how other people are reacting to it probably something that was a little tough for you all if you ever had to be uh, virtual and not playing together. Um, maybe a question for you all is how have you found, and maybe this is maybe a bit of a redundant question, but a couple of people are asking about making music um, during COVID-19. You all are lucky enough to be able to be there safely. We see lots of social distancing, masks, um, bell covers, all of those wonderful things. Um, the value of being able to make music together um, when some people just aren't able to. I think um, that's not really a question, but maybe if anyone has any thoughts about maybe why this is more meaningful this year than other years, given um, the circumstance and circumstances that the world are in right now. Yeah, that's, that's a wonderful question. Anybody want to address that? of the importance of that, come on up here, yeah. And while he's coming up, I will say that um, it, it, we found some benefits. I, I will tell you that in all of the, the difficulties, we've seen that by being socially distanced and um, that having to be so spread out like this, the students have become more independent. They, they have to count better, they have to rely on themselves because you don't have that closeness of the comfort zone, you're there by yourself, so you have, have only yourself to rely on. And we're seeing at the middle school and the high school a little bit of better independence as far as rhythm goes. And um, all of these online assessments that we're doing when kids have to record themselves and submit, they are having to listen to themselves more because they listen back to that recording. And there's that self-critique that I think is valuable, I know is valuable. And then Dane wants to discuss uh, his aspects of this. Hi. Hi. Um, so what I've 
realized, and what has been a big thing is I, I'm in, also in dance and I'm in choir um, and in band. And I've realized that, you know, through tough times and through, you know, struggle and music is something that always brings people together, you know, whether it's through singing, whether it's through band, it's something that we all, we all do, like Ms. Mato said, said, it's, it's something that, you know, no one, everyone is different, but together we can be together and be as one and, you know, kind of almost healing, mm. you know, being, you know, able to, in the environment with family, with friends and stuff like that, you know, it's, it's, it's the environment that makes it, you know, so special and so different, you know, especially mm-hmm. in a year like this when, you know, no one's knowing what is going on and stuff like that, music, dance, you know, singing, it brings people together and, you know, it's, it's a sense of hope. For sure. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dane. Yes. I think um, that's, I think that's a really important and really well spoken. I think based on how um, you all are answering all of these questions, and I already know you are wonderful students because I know your teacher, um, but maybe do you, I, this is more of a question for you, Michelle, or maybe um, administration, but uh, what do you see of the difference of your students from the time they start in band to the time they graduate high school? What do you think beyond the music um, do they develop the most? I mean, we've talked about things like social skills, being able to engage with others, but could you talk a little bit about the growth that you see in these students? Or maybe one of the seniors can say how they have grown through these years, uh, but it's definitely evident that they're very uh, accomplished uh, young people. Sure, I think that's um, a large part of, it, of the leadership that, that comes from being in groups like this, where they're expected to teach and mentor the students that are, are with them every day. When we get into the marching band situation, they usually have a freshman standing right beside them. And the expectation is that they are leading, not by yelling or, or um, uh, intimidating that young person, but by encouraging and using teaching techniques. And we do, the staff, we do a lot of leadership training with our seniors to help them understand how, what are the techniques we share out ideas and the other thing I think is going through audition process. Uh, when you have to stand and play in front of a person and you have to put yourself out there, it gives you that confidence that you don't have as a young person that you grow into the more that you do it. And I know that our kids are really good when they walk into job interviews. They're great as you see the way they, they speak so eloquently. One of the reasons I wanted them here instead of me all, the whole time, because they're better to talk to you about this than I am. Um, but, but the fact that they can put themselves out there and not be afraid to stand and play in front of someone is very similar to a job interview or a college interview or, you know, all of those things. So the leadership and the growth, um, anybody else want to address that? Now they're all going to be shy. Cheesy, come on up. (laughs) I asked something like that and then they're... (laughs) Hello. So I think at the beginning of this program, I was like really shy and kind of introverted. I didn't really put myself out there. And I think if I was a freshman now, I probably would be like lost right now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But, um, after kind of going through like the whole band process with auditions, and I'm also in jazz band where I have to solo a lot, and there's been times where I started like the entire concert just solo that kind of has taught me to um, be less nervous talking to people or presenting. And I think that's really helped me grow. And I don't think I would have grown as much if I wasn't in this program. Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, being able to present yourself to others is definitely a skill you learn as a uh, performer. Um, On that note, a couple of people are wondering, um, how many of you are interested, you can maybe just pull the room, interested in going into music as a career? There are nine, ten hands up, and we don't have everyone in the room. This is um, because some of our kids are remote learners. I'm usually missing uh, around 20, about a third of the ensemble every day. So we already have about ten hands up of students that are interested in various aspects, whether it be production, education, performance, all of those things. Right, right. And you mentioned having quality music educators. Um, um, I wonder how many of you are interested in music education. I know of a couple because they're in the youth symphony. (laughs) Music educators? 
five of them. Wow, the that's ABC wonderful. Education. Yeah, and, and, and we talk a lot. We do a lot of um, career advising, I guess you'd call it, where we try to keep tabs on them. If, if they're thinking of going into music, we try to capture them at, around sophomore, junior year and yep. uh, sit down and have a conversation and say, okay, what do you want to do? How can we best prepare you? Do you understand right. what life is like? Mm -hmm. um, because I want them to know that we are in a very, very, uh, just not a typical situation. We, I'm at a school that, that has just this wonderful program I'm so fortunate to be a right. part of. We have a community support. We have a school for the arts. Not every place has this. Right. And uh, I want them to know what they're getting into. So we talk a lot about how to help mm. prepare them for that and what the realities are. But yeah. um, I'm always happy to see great kids going into that. Yes. Along the lines of that, um, uh, maybe a, a student could answer this, but what have you gained uh, from band or from Miss Monagold or your other teachers? Um, what have they given you besides just becoming a better musician? I, cause I, I know that she is spending time with you outside, um, talking you through life things and, and, you know, we just talked about college and that, but what do you feel are some other things that you have gained from being in this band program besides just being a better musician? We've touched on it a little bit. Hi. Hello. Um, I think we've gained independence a lot because we're like traveling without our parents. We're just with the band directors. Mm. And also they expect a lot from us. So we need to be where we need to be, when and where and bring what. And so that's really put on us. Right, um, right. As individuals. Yes, for sure. How many, so how many band trips do you all go on? Um, we go every other year, usually. Cool. So. Very, very cool. Awesome. And I know you all have a marching band and I'm assuming that requires travel as well. And I know there's a, I don't know if this was the mantra when I was in high school. I'm probably, it's probably the same now. If you're on time, you're late. Um, <laughs> yes. I do laughter. Yes. Um, yes. <laughs> so learning how to be independent, take charge of things yourself, definitely. I'm sure your parents actually appreciate that a lot, getting yeah. that from your teachers. Thank you so much. What was your name? Samantha. Samantha. Nice to meet you, Samantha. Um, yeah, you know, what do you, what are some other things that you find your students coming to you with besides just musical things, um, Michelle? Yeah, we, I, I always tell the seniors in the summer that I'll probably find you in tears in the hallway or you know in the in the restroom at some point because honestly this this senior year is incredibly difficult on kids and i think this year's been um been tough even more so because of the added anxiety of everything else going on in their world but uh the fact that you you're you're not in control. We talk right. about that circle of control a lot of spend your time focusing on what you can control and what is outside of your control don't let it overtake you. And and the poor kids are, and I remember the time as well too, when you're putting out your college applications or you don't know if you should go to college and you don't know what's happening. It's a very uncertain time. And I, I always try to check in with the seniors and try to help them um, getting through that process of what it's like and how you prepare them for that. The first thing most people say to a college or a high school senior is, what are you doing next year? Where are you going to college? And they get really fed up hearing that. <laughs> um, and so if I can help them just kind of mentally prepare and, and think through, well, this this will be out of my control. I'll be fine no matter where I go because I'm a great student. And right. if college isn't for me, I can't, I don't have to do what my friends are doing. I don't have to major in what they're doing. I don't have to go to college if, if it's not what's right. best for me. Um, I think that just kind of being a person and, and, and understanding what they're going through and letting them know, I've been doing this a long time. I've seen a lot of kids go through their senior years. You're gonna be fine, just like they were fine. So I, I think the best that we can do is, is guide them and be there when they're having a rough time. Um, and I know them as a staff, the band directors the, and the choir directors, we know them for eight years. Right. You know, it's, it's amazing how we see them grow. So if I see their faces and I can tell they're having a rough day, hopefully I can talk to them and see what's, what's going on and help them out. Yeah. Um, I, 
a lot of being a musician, I feel, is a bit of a mental game, actually. You know, you can learn technique and you can become very proficient on your instrument, but a lot of what music is, is mental and expression in your own emotions. Um, and so we talk a little bit about how music can help mental health, um, but how do you all tackle that at that high school level and maybe even the middle school level when it comes to mental health in the schools? Maybe students could talk about this as well. Yeah, Sh Sheridan, come on up. I, I always tell them, and Sheridan's going to talk to you a little bit, but I talk to them about this being their their island. And when we come in here every day, six period, the, the water's around us. We forget about it. We're on our island, and we just have fun playing together. And, and Sheridan can give you some more insight on this. Yeah. Hi. Hello. So, um, I'd say Mrs. Monigold particularly has done a fantastic job of with COVID, giving us small goals that are very much achievable and attainable during this time. Because for a lot of things during COVID, we just don't know what the end result could look like, but we know that we can come to band and work towards a goal of perfecting a piece or even just having fun every day is very much a goal that we can look forward to achieving. Mm -hmm. And so that is something that has helped me personally. It's something I can work towards and do my best in and take pride in every day. And it's just fantastic. And I really do appreciate that. from Mrs. Yeah, Evans. that's wonderful. Thank you, Sheridan. Um, yeah, being able to have a little bit of control over something in a, in a world where there seems to be a lot of things that are just spinning out of control um, yeah. is, yeah, definitely something valuable. Um, another thing I wanted to touch on that people have mentioned um, not all school districts are like this, but I know it is the case for Jackson. You are very close with your middle school band directors and you all work as a unit and you say you're with them for eight years. So mm -hmm. can you talk a little bit about why it's so important that we invest and care about music making at that young level and how much it Im how much the quality of education at a young level impacts what they're going to be like in high school oh yeah um we we all split our day at the middle school and the high school so i i'll spend my mornings um in a typical year teaching beginning classes of fifth graders and then i also team teach with the eighth grade and, you know, I help out and do sectionals with the freshmen and then help out. So we really find that it's valuable to see the students at all levels. And we're very fortunate that administration lets us, we design the schedule so we can do that. And that's not, mm -hmm. that doesn't happen. Um, it just can't happen for various reasons at every school. Sometimes you have just assigned elementary band directors in middle school and high school. I find that it's really beneficial. They know us, they're comfortable with us. We, um, I, I'm able to see how they've started and what they've come from. And also, even beyond that, it's the elementary teachers that do such a fabulous job of preparing the kids before they come to us. They have a love of music. They, they're excited about coming and joining band or choir, any of the opportunities that they have because of what the elementary teachers are doing. And we try to keep open lines of communication and support them too. Um, I think that's incredibly valuable because we all know that without these young, excited feeder programs, mm -hmm. you can't have anything at the, at the uh, high school level. Right, right. Um, and we talk a lot about this um, at the symphony when we're looking at our professional players and where they come from and where they started. It's a pipeline of education. Um, and a lot of our professional musicians can point to their elementary school teacher, their, their high school band director, their high school orchestra instructor and say, that's why I'm successful. That's the reason why I'm where I am uh, today. And so I think it's really, really important to you know be investing in um, young music education at the very youngest levels because it's gonna make wonderful programs um, like we have here at Jackson. Um, a couple of more, maybe a little fun questions, not quite as as, as deep as we've been getting. Um, you are playing something by Frank Tichelli, who I have also had the pleasure of meeting, a wonderful man. Um, what are some of the favorite pieces that you all have worked on and maybe like why, are, why were they fun? What genres of music? I know some of you are in jazz band as well. Maybe talk about what, what your favorite types of music are to play. Anybody want to take that one? This is Raina. Hi, Raina. Hi. So the piece I had in mind was actually from middle school. It was the Great Locomotive Chase. Yeah. Oh, I, I know that piece. I know that piece. 
I mean, like looking back at it now, it probably wasn't the most technically difficult thing I've ever played, but it's just the fact that like, it made so much sound and like, it sounded like something that wasn't real life. It was just very cool to do. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> can you, like yeah. Can you explain what that piece is for those who maybe don't know what that piece is? Yeah, sure. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was actually created like from a silent film. Yeah. that's like going after like a train that's like taking off and stuff mm -hmm. and so like when we played the piece it was like the flutes did this thing where we rolled back so we like went flat and that was the train mm -hmm. whistle and then you had like well i think we made noises too mm -hmm. like for the chugga chugga yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> it was very interesting that like we were acting out the sounds of something that was meant to be a silent film yeah very cool that is a wonderful piece yeah thank you for bringing that up Raina. it's a really yeah, really fun great. one um yeah, any, any other ones? Any other ones? Uh, well, here, let's let him, oh. you've already, Carson, come on up. As soon as you ask this question, the, yeah. the, the, everything <laughs> in the room changed. They all have their favorites. Amazing. Hi, I'm, I'm Carson. Um, Hi. And when I was in eighth grade, I, we played Red Baron, which was so much fun for me as a trombone, because there's this section at the, towards the end of the piece where we were just let loose and we could just went, wow. <laughs> It was so much fun, and we just got to do it, like, every day for, like, three weeks. Um, Wonderful. Then, I don't know. It's just, it was really fun, because before that, a lot of times in band, I was so focused on just, like, getting it to be perfect, but this was where I finally realized, oh, I can make this my own. I can have fun in for band, sure. even That's though it's yeah. no fun. Yeah, <laughs> wonderful. Yes. And it's great because both of those pieces, we really try, I think as a staff, we try to find pieces that have historical relevance or have mm -hmm. something that we can also be teaching them. So the Great Locomotive tra Chase was based on a true story that we talked about, the Red Baron, obviously, we did some historical digging into that. Yep. And so that's, that. they'll never forget those things. And that makes me happy to see that they remember that so well. And it's, I remember playing that Great Locomotive Chase when I was in middle school. Uh, so, you know, these pieces stick with you for a long time. And, um, you know, it'll, it, it'll be when you, when you look back in 20 years, still remembering um, making those sounds to imitate a train. Um, and it's still fun to do. Um, just a couple of minutes left. I wonder if any students um, or, or you, Michelle, or, or anyone uh, before we leave, uh, the students have to pack up to head to uh, their next period. If they had any, anything they wanted the patrons of the Canton Symphony to know about music making or about what they've, uh, what they've been doing this year or um, what, what they hope to see come out of, um, of music education and band programs in the future. Olivia, you know Olivia? I do. Hi, <laughs> Hi Olivia. So I think that something really important we've all learned this year is that in-person music will probably never go away. And so I think that even though we're using a lot of technology, I still think it's really important that we make music just as we always do because you can't replace something like that. And I just think Making music is very important and we need more music educators so we can just keep this cycle of music going. And I hope that these patrons keep that in mind. Yes. Thank you, Olivia. That's a very, uh, that's a perfect way to put it. I, I probably couldn't have said it better myself. Um, and it's interesting, um, Olivia says that she's probably heard both Matthew and I at the Canton Youth Symphony say that, even though we've had to be uh, virtual so far this entire year, I think every single week we're like, we will be back in person, don't you worry, because m making music is in, in person is important. Um, and it is a feeling and an experience that you can't uh, duplicate at all. Um, and I know the students are going to have to get going here in a minute. So we're going to transition over to just a lot of more questions focused uh, for uh, Michelle, but I'll be right back. Okay, but students, thank you so much uh, for uh, being a part of this. And uh, thank you all for your questions. We will have time for a few more questions here. If you have more questions about the technicalities of a of the music programs, um, uh, administratively, um, funding wise, all of those types of questions, we will have about 10 to 15 minutes to focus on things like 
that. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the Canton Symphony does have um, a Canton Youth Symphony program. Uh, we have three ensembles, um, a young youth strings group, and then two full orchestras. Um, the last uh, uh, student you saw, Olivia, is our first trumpet in our advanced orchestra, and we are very happy to have her with us. Thank you, Michelle, for giving us your wonderful students uh, to be a part of our organization. Um, so a couple of, of people have wondered um, what it is, what working with the administration, how do you make decisions on, on schedules? Because I know that's a really big part of this entire process is just figuring out when things happen. So can you talk a little bit about the relationship that you have with your administration? Absolutely. Um, I'm very fortunate that they, um, they, they take time. I'm, I'm part of the building leadership team. And that's kind of like the department heads. We all get together and um, we'll just be coming up now in March once every student has requested their classes for the, the year. We'll get together and look at the schedule. Um, our administration, we, we really do have support top to bottom with the arts. And so they understand that we need to travel from building to building. They do their best to help us navigate this. It can't always be a perfect world but the fact that they um, have us have some input on that, looking at how we can maybe creatively even schedule some kids to make sure that they stay in the program. I am incredibly fortunate that the coaches at Jackson uh, share and are willing to make sure the kids can be well-rounded. And so um, if a student's in band and other sports and activities, which we have a lot of, the kids tell me what their sport is and what the conflicts are, and then I go to the coaches. And without a doubt, the coaches are incredible um, as far as we're flexible with each other. We really do try to say, okay, where do they need to be? Which activity is most important at this point? How can we share them? Because uh, being well-rounded is vital, especially at the young age. Mm -hmm. As they get older, they might have to make some difficult choices, but administration, coaches, staff, everybody is, we're all wearing purple here. And I think that's real important that we work together to give kids and parents the best overall educational experience. Right, yeah, that, and that was a question that a couple people were having as well about um, sports and choir and, and, the sh and sharing students and how busy, uh, I see how busy these students are. I um, mean, some, some of these students even take more outside out time outside of this to join things like the Canton Youth Symphonies, to be in things like speech and debate, um, right. to be in show choir, to do all of these different things. Um, so what do you tell students when they're trying to decide what they should do so that they can be well-rounded, but they also don't burn themselves out by doing maybe too much? Right. And that happens a lot of times where a kid, they're like, yeah, there's just a lot of things they can be a part of. And they have to sometimes make a hard decision. And we talk about that. And, and I've had a kid, uh, to use an example, I had a kid in Canton Ballet and, um, you know, being asked to do some very important roles that would conflict with some performances and it, it might cause, a, you know, a problem with the grade. And we, we talked about it and, and okay, so you, you take the grade hit and you live with that and that's okay because you're making a decision or you, you know, you, Kids have to make those decisions and we can't always have everything. And I think that's really important for them to see. I mean, we'll do our best to, to make it work, but sometimes you just have to decide that this is just going to uh, happen and I've got to let go of this aspect so that I can do something else. And it's important for them to see that we as adults have to do that too. Right. I've had to miss a lot of things because I've had a football game on a Friday night or I've had, you know, right. it happens. And you have okay. to go with where you're... Um, the most important item for you personally and for the group. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, a couple of people are wondering, um, you know, how can people support the school systems maybe um, with, uh, you know, used instruments or helping to fund getting more instruments or that types of things? Do you take instrument donations and that sort of thing? Or how, how do you get all of these? Because it's expensive to have all these instruments for these students. So how does that process work? It is. Um, we we have great support from our administration, but you know that doesn't just come out of thin air. We um, have to pass levies to keep that going, and I also have to keep an eye on my enrollment and my instrument needs years in advance. Right, you're projecting out, and so you know years ago when I went to them and and said, look, I, I see this 
five-year projection of we're going to need this and this and this. And often our boosters will pitch in a certain amount and then the, the, um, the school system pitches in for a certain amount and we work together. Our, our BAM boosters are just a great group of people that help out tremendously. Mm -hmm. um, we also have sometimes where people, I have two trumpets sitting here right now in the office that were dropped off by a parent who said, you know, can you use these? And absolutely, we can give those to kids in need or they can be loaner instruments or switch instruments for kids playing in jazz band or right. beginners that can't afford it. Um, and, and I would stress that, it, um, especially if you have a school system that, that you live in that area, and they might not have the support that we have. You know, if you've got an instrument laying and, and you want to give it to somebody that can use it, please do so because every school program can put those to use. For Absolutely. Sure. Yes. Um, yeah, that it's a really good point is that un unfortunately, uh, not all school systems have the same resources. And um, Jackson is amazing and has wonderful resources, but there's a lot of school systems in this area that don't have the amount of resources that Jackson has. So yes, if you do have any things and would like to donate to different programs, all of the band directors I know would be very, very grateful um, to get those different instruments. Um, can you maybe talk a little bit, we got to see the students and how responsible they were with the social distancing and the, and the masks. Um, can you talk a little bit about personally for you, what this year has been like for you and how it has maybe challenged you and helped you grow as a teacher? Or maybe you're like, no, no, we just need to be done with this year. <laughs> no, no, it's, I, um, I think anyone who manages kids, anyone in the field of education likes uh, of that feeling um, that you are organized and you have the, something in control. Um, you, when we travel with our kids, we have to know what's happening and we have to be able to uh, look ahead at a situation and prepare for it. And this year has been just out of control for us. So I know moving into the summer when we were first looking at, can we rehearse in the summer, the first types of things, um, I worked with a bunch of other area band directors and we worked looking at studies in the health department. How can we do this safely? And we had about three different plans. Um, and this having a big program was worse for us to try to manage because big numbers are usually something good. And this was really hard. So we actually had the group split in two and then smaller groups out of that, uh, just not knowing what was going to happen. So for me personally, it has taught me that um, I, I need to be, be okay with not always knowing and being in control of the situation and that I just need to trust that I can, it, it, with help from others around me, we can get through things that might not be expected. It's been good for me to relax a little bit on that side mm -hmm. um, of the controlling issues because we couldn't always control right. what was going to happen. Um, it's also helped me realize that kids are resilient. I'm more resilient than I thought I was. Um, the devastation of having last year hit, right? We, you have this great group of kids ready to perform and, and then that's all just knocked out of you. Um, it, it's tough. And I, I really was sad for my seniors last year. And then this year's seniors, they haven't gotten much normalcy. Right. Um, and that hurts because you want to see those kids have the same thing. So you're trying to give them uh, experiences that might be different, but still beneficial and meaningful. Right. right. Um, that's, that's been tough. So rethinking and finding the good, right. always finding the bright spots of right. what can we do, not look at what we don't have, but look at what we can do. Right. I think that's so important to model for kids mm -hmm. and to remember myself too. Right. Right. Um, now we just have maybe, you know, one question left in us where it's, you know, almost one. Um, if you maybe just share, looking back on, on the time that you've been teaching and uh, when you were a first teacher versus now and all that you've learned and grown and what do you, what do you see as your teaching philosophy and the way, the way that you, maybe your teaching style has, has grown and changed and where have you found yourself landing and, and what is the most important thing about teaching and, and why do we actually do what we do? Uh, it has nothing to do with the music. <laughs> That's just a means to an end. That honestly, it's it's about the people. It's about the kids. It's about the connections. Um, the music is like, it, it's, it's the way to get that. But um, when it boils down to it, it's, it's 
have I have I helped a kid? Right. Have I helped a kid? And um, you hope that you've made a difference. And I'm in a position where I've 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 had the chance to just meet so many incredible people, uh, students and parents alike. And you just hope that you've made a difference in their life. Um, if they're musicians, that's great. If they're great musicians, that's fantastic. But I think the thing I want more than anything is the kid who's not a very great musician to, to know how much we love and care about them and want them to succeed um, to uh, their great kids. And right. uh, I, from no matter where I've taught, all the different environments, kids are kids. Mm -hmm. There's no difference. There wasn't a difference 31 years ago, and there's not a difference now. They want love. They want structure. They want to feel that you care. Right. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for, for taking time out of your uh, busy teaching schedule uh, to share uh, the classroom with us and to show a little bit of behind the scenes about what uh, music education really means. And uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, March is Music in Our Schools Month. And so if you can find ways to support, to celebrate, to share, to encourage your local music programs and to uh, just highlight what these wonderful teachers are doing, um, it, I know it would mean a lot to them, not just uh, because it's wonderful to, to know that you're appreciated, but also to, for the things we've talked about. So administration can see how important these programs are. Um, so that the public can see how important these programs are and so that we can continue to build a good and robust music education um, system here in Stark County and beyond so that, you know, in 20, 30 years, the Canton Symphony still has the wonderful musicians uh, that we have in the Canton Symphony. So uh, thank you all so much for being here. Um, Michelle, if you have any last minute thoughts for our, our listeners, uh, it was wonderful to hear the students playing, to hear from them. They are truly wonderful students and um, uh, we, we look forward to being able to come to a concert um, whenever we're able to do that. <laughs> Same. We want to hear the orchestra so badly. Thank you for what you do with the Youth Symphony. I know my kids love it. And um, thank you for asking me to do this. It was, it was a pleasure and it was fun. I think for the kids, um, they, they really are uh, great ambassadors of the program. So thank you for giving us this opportunity. Wonderful. Well, thank you all so much for joining us. Uh, we will see you next time on Conversations.